You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is David Smith. He's the senior analyst for the Morgan Report, which you can find online at silver-investor.com. Welcome to the show, David. Hello, Jim. It's great to be back. Goldman Sachs, people have called them financial vampire squid. They're predicting $1,200 gold for this year. They they were saying 1050 and they're saying, see, look, we're being optimistic now, 1200 But I have a feeling that most people who are familiar with the markets aren't thinking $1,200 gold at all. Well, they, I don't know if they are or not, but, you know, I i take uh, the comments by Goldman Sachs with a quite a bit of amusement. It's like, ask yourself, are they really out there to help me? I don't think so. So it's interesting what their views are, and a lot of people pay attention to them. But, you know, you, get, you, you do most of your own research because uh, that's where the responsibility and the potential lies. And I think, frankly, that the ducks are lining up for a sustained trend run later this year, um, in the metals and gold and silver in the mining stocks. We're already seeing some indication of that. And we have to get through some price points on the upside to prove that. But by the time you prove that, then some of the potential is gone if you haven't bought some of your favorites into weakness, which we've been seeing lately. And uh, if you haven't continued to do the research to see if you can pick up something that maybe is lagging behind the rest that you know is a quality product. What are the signs that you are getting a quality product? Well, in this case, the signs that I think where the ducks are lining up is that you've got uh, new money coming into hedge funds. Uh, these are all what I'd call straws in the wind or tea leaves, or call them whatever you'd like. Um, the Shanghai uh, Futures uh, Exchange has seen very large declines in the, over the last few weeks in silver uh, inventory stocks. Um, a number of the better mining stocks are refusing to drop into new lows. Gold and silver themselves, when they probe deeply into the current support, um, they tend to have uh, sharp up days where the prices, for example, last week the silver was down about 80 cents at one point and ended up a nickel. And uh, so those are the things that show me that buying is coming in. And I really believe, and nobody has, you know, nobody has that crystal ball, there's still a possibility of new lows uh, in the metals before we turn around. I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, if it does, I would be watching like a hawk to see if huge buying comes in at those lows in order to turn things around. And that's that's where the potential lies. And we still have belts of support below us as well as belts of support of resistance above us. So we're in that uh, wide trading range currently, and that's why people need to um, not have a lot of activity because you can get chewed up in that range. If you're going to buy something, you want to buy at the bottom end of the range. And if you're going to do a little selling, you want to sell into resistance. It's hard for people to uh, you know not get jumpy about that. But I've been adding a little bit over the last few days. I added uh, some more this morning, actually, on a uranium stock, which had lost over half of its value, and let, yet I think it's worth several times more than it was a couple years ago. It's run by one of the best people in the business. And I looked at where I'd made my last purchase, which was several months ago. Um, it was at $1.60, and I was trading at $1.07. So I thought, you know, I like this stock, and I like it even better at $1.07, and I bought some more. So um, I wasn't going to buy it at $1.40. But when it gave me that opportunity to buy down at this level, I did. And I think that's what you need to do is try to buy into severe weakness on companies that you still have faith in. Yes, I saw uranium prices uh, at a 10-year low, yet there's something like some 50 atomic power plants that are about to come online. They're going to have to use something to power them. Yeah, the, the story in uranium is really compelling. And, you know, we can even devote a whole show to this at some point. But uh, it's a question of when it turns around uh not so much if, and uh, I think it'll be pretty, pretty a sharp turnaround when it finally does. It, it'll wear you out, and it has a, a lot of people, just like what the uh, palladium and platinum did before they finally got underway. But now their charts are looking pretty good, and I think those people that had the courage to buy into weakness are feeling pretty good now, and they're watching to see if things are going to get even better for them over the near term. It sounds like the key to today's market is patience. It really is, and, and anytime you're in that uh, sideways trading, you really have to have that patience. We're going into a seasonally weak period for the metals, which doesn't mean they'll make new lows, but it means they may uh, broadly go sideways for a while into late summer. And you know there's a book that uh, I would like to recommend to people. It's not widely available, probably not even in Canada. I think it's still in print, but not sure. A tr- uh, an analyst trader by the name of Reg Ogden, who um, gave presentations at a number of conferences that I attended over the last few years in Canada. He may be retired now, I'm not sure, 
but he wrote a book called The Ultimate Gold Stock Trader. And one of the things that stuck in my mind that he said, uh, after many, many years of trading these stocks, uh, is that you look for a low in the gold stocks around, if, if I remember correctly, it was around the 25th of July. So that, that really uh, stands quite nicely with what we think of, you know, the mining stocks getting ready to power upward into August and September. And so there's that anticipatory aspect of the market where uh, the, when you watch the better ones start firming up in July, that gives you an indication that a pretty good-sized move has a good potential of happening going into August and September, and you can tend to try to finish off your purchases into that weakness rather than buying into the strength that everybody now sees as we go into the fall months. The situation in Ukraine, a lot of people thought that would be boosting gold prices dramatically right now, yet it hasn't happened, and we've had other uh, things that in the past, uh, the North Koreans, again, live fire exercises off their coast, uh, making the South Koreans very, very nervous, and yet these events have not seen a, a rapid rise in the price of gold. How come? You know, Jim, I consider myself to be a serious student of history. And looking at the two events you mentioned, Ukraine and North Korea, I have never felt as an investor that those are systemic reasons why I want to be long gold and silver. I think they're more symptoms of the systemic issues that we've got going on uh, in regards to the dysfunctionality of uh, inter-country uh, relations in this uh, in this part of the world. And I think that there's so many th reasons to buy gold and silver uh, because these are symptoms, not because those are reasons to buy themselves. And so that's that's the way I've approached that. But I think, you know, as we go into the late spring and early summer, uh, everybody is watching like a hawk these different price points, you know, the lows in the $18 for silver and 1180 for gold. Uh, and then uh, on the top side, I'd say $22 uh, and $26 for silver and uh, 1450 to 1650 for gold and, say, 850 for palladium. I think if people kind of watch those areas, they'll have a good indication on breakout moves as time goes on, and they won't have to be spending so much time trying to analyze every $5 move in gold. And these things that we're seeing in the uh, U uh, international uh, relations space are just indications to me that we have increasing uh, tensions and dysfunctionality between East and West and between West and West even, and uh, things are going to get more tense, and that's going to be a positive driver for the metals going into late summer and certainly into the fall. And the Russians, are they paying attention to the credit rating services, uh, knocking their credit rating down to one point above junk bonds? Do you think I, Mr. Putin's concerned? I don't know. I think the problem is the West always analyzes everything in terms of finances. And they think, oh, if we put the squeeze on this company and that makes, or this country and makes it hard for them financially, they'll buckle in. Well, maybe they will, but they've also got other ways of going about it. And not all of them are looking at the bottom line to determine what their behavior is going to be. That can influence it, but ultimately they have tools of their own. And I think, you know, this business of the Russians and the Chinese and the BRICS uh, conference moving away from the U.S. dollar as a trade unit, I think that's something that is I'm more concerned about than whether or not how things go in the short term in Ukraine. So those are the that's the area that I think people should really be watching to see how uh, the alternative view uh, to the U.S. dollar as a reserve status uh, is going to pan out, and that could have massive, massive uh, effects on us and our quality of life over the next few years. And sure, a uh, lower credit rating for someone, uh, allegedly, Mr. Putin is worth $70 billion, not bad for an ex-spy. Uh, does he really care about credit ratings? If you have the cash, why do you need credit? I think he cares more about the status of Russia, and if you look at the Russian diaspora, you know, Crimea has always, and, and Ukraine has always been an integral part of their, whether their empire or the country itself, and they're either going to exercise nominal control of it, over it, uh, by being nearby, or actual control by occupying it, because without that space, Russia is just a backwater country. They have no depth against invasion from Europe and this sort of thing, and they lose a lot of their grain basket and that sort of thing. So anyone who thinks that the Russians are going to walk away from Ukraine just doesn't understand their history. That's right. Uh, in fact, uh, Ukraine has only existed as a separate country for very short periods of time over the last 200 years, uh, you know, in comparison to other nations in the same area. That's really true, and I understand the tremendous uh, ill will that goes on in Ukraine uh, you know, in regards to the Russians versus the Ukrainians. I mean, there's, that history is rife with violence. And uh, during the time of Stalin, uh, 
he shut off the borders there and they had a massive famine that's caused millions of Ukrainians to die. So there's no love lost between many Ukrainians and many Russians. Be that as it may, geography trumps everything else and uh, it's not going to be a situation that's just going to go away and the Russians are going to go back with their tail between their legs. I think we need to be very careful about what we're doing and certainly understand how geography and history motivate nations, including ourselves, to do certain things or not do certain things. Sure. And, and you take a look at international relations and friendliness. Take a look at Canada and the U.S. It's, it's some minor issues here and there, you know, little threats of a trade war. But honest to God, it's more like uh, cousins sitting around the table arguing about who gets the last glass of Kool-Aid as opposed to there where they say, you'll take the Kool-Aid. And we know what we're talking about when we say it. That's really true. And I think if people focus on these issues and how they're going to impact things in the bigger sense, they'll understand why it's critically important to have at least what we call a starter stash for some physical metals and a few of the better mining stocks. I think they'll be richly rewarded in the coming years. Thanks a lot for chatting with us, David. You bet, Jim. My guest has been David Smith, Senior Analyst for The Morgan Report, which you can find online at silver-investor.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter or Talk Digital Net. You can contact us at info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard.